Inconsistent. What's going on, y'all? This episode is a two-part series, so if you want to check out the second part, the link will be in the descriptions below. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe, and uh, leave a comment. Let us know. Enjoy the show. You gotta cover that hole, bro. You're such a nervous Nancy. Nobody even cares. Lewis who? Lewis. First, let's start with Lewis. First, spell that correctly. L U I Z. And then his last name is M U N I Z. M U what? M U N Munoz I Z? Munoz Martin? I think that's it, yeah. Not Martin, but Martin for some reason. It's weird like that. What is, who is he, yo? Who is this guy? I just realized that 116th is his name after him. Let's read about it. Take a second. Luis Mun- <laughs> Jose and Luis Alberto Munoz Martin. Uh, February 1980, 1898. This is the lesson he of the day, everybody. Was a Puerto Rican journalist, <gasps> politician, statesman, and was the first elected governor of Puerto Rico, regarded as the architect of the Puerto Rican Commonwealth. Very interesting. Okay. Even though I probably won't agree with his politics because of what that says there. He's the architect of the Commonwealth, which I'm assuming... Look up, leave the name there, and then just put a space and then put Albizo Campos. This name is not going to spell it correctly. Go ahead. Put, wait, look up what? Just put a space, put Albizo. Yeah, what does it say? Pedro Albizo Campos, right there. If I, if I remember correctly from the book, okay, when Albizo Campos came out of jail a second time, this is the guy. This is the guy that was the governor at the time. I only remember because once you said all that stuff and as you started reading, I was like, I remember this guy now. He's from the book, The World the The War Against the Puerto Ricans. I remember. Yeah. So He was the one that was like tortured, wasn't he? Albizo Campos? Yeah, yeah. Albizo Campos. No, I'm not talking about yeah, I'm not talking about but the, the Luis Munoz was the governor. He was the governor while all that was going on. Yeah. So I think they used to be cool. I'm trying to remember, it's been a long time since I freaking read this book. They were cool, and then Abizo Campos went to jail. This guy kept going in his political career and freaking basically made Puerto Rico what it is right now, a welfare state. So he went the other side. Albizo went for revolution. Abizo Campos went the route of um, Che Guayavera and uh, uh, then what's the guy from Cuba? I forgot his name. Castro. Castro? Yeah, what's his first name? Fidel? Fidel Castro. <laughs> These guys are all revolutionaries. They wanted to fight for the people, fight for the country. Although I disagree with a lot of their politics, their sentiment, I understand it. They wanted their people to strive on their own, two feet. Right. And, and uh, Che died. I think, he was, I think he was actually Argentina. He wasn't even Cuban. He was just a revolutionary. He fought. Cuba got it. Um, I think Che well, actually we spoke in Puerto Rico a few times, if I remember correctly. And Albizo Campos, Puerto Rico, America just crushed them. I mean, they were wild, though. The Nationalist Party was, they tried to kill the president. I think they went into the, you know when the riots took place? The riot, the freaking, uh, when they went into Congress, the, the state capitol, and they started doing all that. If I remember correctly, in 1960-something, Puerto Ricans from the National Party went into the Capitol building and started shooting. It was like 1960 something or 1950 something. I can't remember. Where we're going into was something I'm not prepared to talk about, but but because we looked it up and figured we talk about it. Puerto Rico officials hopeful of progress on statehood. That's horrendous. Uh, that's. I don't think people understand that Puerto Rico is the way it is right now. We're poor. We're a welfare state because of America. What What I don't understand is what they gain to, what do they hope to gain by becoming a state? They're like, oh, we're going to be like New York. It's going to be, no, it's not going to be like that. We're going to be like Alabama. We're going to be like West Virginia. That's what it's going to be like. 
is going to be a poor state that gets no help from the government. Well, the thing about that is, is that the thing about that is that yeah, exactly. There are no, there are no. There's nothing to be hopeful about the situation because there are no jobs. There aren't any. You know, all you've done is make it official. Yeah. Like right then, now, we're in an unofficial state. Yeah. That's the way I could look at it. Yeah. It's we're unofficially a state by going ahead and. You think the government's gonna pay off Puerto Rico's debts? That's none of that. None of that's gonna happen. You know, these niggas are. Like, like we talked about a hundred times, we said it a thousand times before. Puerto Ricans, because the fact that they were colonized by America, are very Americanized. They think that America's daddy. Now, an example is you look at Cuba. Cuba didn't have America. Cuba was on their own. Cuba is very, they're like island people still. You know what I'm saying? I, I have a friend that works in, um, in a different garage from me, but we talk all, every time we go to the same garage, we talk. He goes to Cuba for, he's not even Cuban, he's Puerto Rican. He goes to Cuba for fun because his wife is like half Cuban or something like that. So he goes out there for fun. He goes, they are very in touch with their culture. They're very in touch with their Indian heritage, with their African heritage, with their Spanish heritage. In America, we talk about it, but we don't celebrate it. uh, We might as well just be Americans. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... Puerto Rico is very Americanized and they're very reliant on America's money. We want welfare. We want Medicaid. We want this. In Cuba, they don't think like that. In Cuba, they're like, we got to turn this washing machine into a motorcycle because we got no money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they're like, we got to figure this out on our own. That's hilarious. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I know at least five cousins that's done that. Did it freeze? No, we're good. You could talk. Yeah, we're good right here. All right. So. Yeah, so like that's my disagreement with this whole becoming a state is we're not, Puerto Ricans are not going to learn nothing. I'd rather my kid learn the hard way than not learn at all. One would argue, though, that, you know, um, one would argue, I would imagine, in, in in on their part, living there would say to us, "You're not over here. Yeah, you're yeah, over there eating off the uh, off of the USA. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're the ones out here. And you're telling us what you think we should do over here. Like you're not here. You're not going through it. You're not paying the what 16 percent in sales taxes. You're not, um, you know, paying for a gallon of milk that's more than the minimum wage. You know what I mean? So it's like." Yeah. yeah, we really don't have a voice, do we? So the way I, this is why the I irony is is that we do have a voice because we're the ones that are allowed to vote. The only person that decides who runs that island. The way I see it is this: if you don't like your situation where you live, move. You know what I'm saying? Puerto Rico's in a rare position in the in in the world, where if we become independent, America's not going to leave us alone. America's right in our backyard. You know what I'm saying? It's not like that's the end of Puerto Rico. Like, we're going to be with constant trade with America. Tourists are going to be going to America. It, it It's almost like... You it, mean to Puerto Rico? No, no, oh, yeah, yeah, to Puerto Rico. So American tourists are going to go to Puerto Rico. It's not going to stop. Uh, uh, American companies already are tied to Puerto Rico. They're not just going to leave it. So Puerto Rico's in a position. Look up how much it costs a container to ship to the Dominican Republic. A ship... Ship a container to the Dominican Republic. Okay. Yeah. They, I, if I remember, I don't know if you, well, you can look at pictures too. I think I saw an image of it. Versus Puerto Rico, you can look up too. Look up images. I think there was, I saw a nice infographic. Shipping. Oh, no, you put cost of shipping container to Dominican Republic. Put V versus Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico right there. Boom. See if there's an image. Go to images. I saw a nice picture that showed the example. Oh, see what? No, they're just like pictures of containers, I guess. Damn. See if you can find something on, on all while I'm talking about it. 
Maybe take out the containers? Yeah, do that. Nothing. Is that the price right there, that graph on the bottom right corner? This one? No, you already exited out. That one right at the bottom right corner right there. Boom. What does that say? Those are prices? Let's see. Economy of Puerto Rico. <laughs> nah, you gotta. Oh, is that it? Anyway, I'll just say it because we're gonna kill time here. To ship a container to the Dominican Republic costs about a thousand dollars. Okay, that's the cost to ship a container from the Americas to the Dominican Republic. Mind you, the Dominican Republic is not that far from America. Okay, the Dominican Republic is right there. Okay, thousand dollars to ship a, the same exact container to Puerto Rico, which is closer. And it's a Commonwealth of America costs about three thousand dollars. It's three times more to ship to Puerto Rico than it is to the Dominican Republic. This is why I, w I would tell you to save whatever you're going to talk about and then just send it to the chat, and I could have pulled it up. I have something too, but that's for another episode. But uh, my my thing is that the reason why it costs so much is because of the Jones Act of whatever uh, year I forget what it is, but look up the Jones Act. And also the taxes and fees that America charges. Because we're not allowed, Port, well, Puerto Rico is not allowed to receive any shipping from anywhere in the world unless it goes through America first. So that means Puerto Rico has to pay for the shipping to go to America and then to Puerto Rico. And that's how the economy works over there. So things are more expensive. Things are harder to get because of that. When the Dominican Republic, if they want a shipment from Ecuador or, or Venezuela... They can get it straight there. But if you want to ship something to Puerto Rico, it has to go past. It has to go through an American port on an American ship, which America doesn't even like. So ships have a thing where they have to fly a flag of a country on it. And I forgot what's the purpose of the flag. It has something to do with taxes or whatever. America doesn't have that many ships because it's cheaper to fly flags from other um, countries, mostly from uh from Caribbean countries because it's cheaper, but that's a whole other thing that I, I mind you, I'm not researching anything. I'm just going off the top of that for stuff I remember from researching it freaking three, four years ago. You looking at the costs? I'm just trying to see the graph. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, you know, <sighs> the Dominican Republic is closer to Puerto Rico too. You think that with this administration, it would happen? What the thing? Puerto oh, Rico becoming a yeah. state. Yeah, I think it's gonna happen now. I don't think America wants it to become a state. I think I, I, I think America prefers that it has it like at at the point where they're about to cut the umbilical cord. That it's no. we're still providing life they, blood they, to they it. They already they already said that they're gonna go for it. Who the Biden administration said that that's one of their goals to make Puerto Rico a state and to make Washington D.C. a state. So wow. there's gonna be fifty two states. That's what that's their goal. They want to make that. They're gonna do that. They have the the Democrats are gonna. They're obviously they're for it. Um, Port, the governor of Puerto Rico is gonna definitely gonna go for it because they no, no, none of these people have pride. What do you mean by pride? Like what you're gonna lose? You're gonna lose your country status to become a state. You know why Hawaii used to be a country? Hawaii used to have be, um, they had their own king. Okay? Hawaii had a king. I think, if I remember correctly, a, a company kidnapped the king. And that, look it up, because I may be, I may be remembering it wrong. Either they kidnapped the king or the princess or something like that. And somehow America helped them, and America convinced them to make a mistake. Now, don't get me wrong. If you look at Hawaii, they have their own culture, they have their own language, they have their own this, their own that, which is beautiful. I love it. It's fantastic. But they're not their own country. They're not their own people. They have to bend the knee to the American government. Puerto Rico, if we become uh, our own country, we don't have to do anything anybody says. We're our own people. If America says, oh, you know, we have this law that we passed and you guys have to abide by it. Puerto Rico don't have to be like, no, we're not part of you. We don't have to do any of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Also, mind you, the fact that Puerto Rico doesn't pay federal taxes. Because we don't pay no money to the federal government, our ties to the federal government is very limited. And that's why we don't vote for presidents. Because we're not tied to the federal government. You know what I'm saying? 
Puerto Rico pays state tax, which I don't even think is actually called a state tax. We pay tax for the island, basically. I don't know, you know, if you live there, you pay for the area, whatever. It's like New York City tax, you know? That's not the same thing as sales tax? I don't know if, I think they might have, no, sales tax is totally different. We have, um, you have, um, that's like income tax. So you, they, and this is crazy to me. When you get paid, the government takes their cut, right? Before you even cash your check, the government takes their cut. All right. When you go to buy something, the government takes their cut. If you sell something, the government takes their cut. There's no reason why the government should be double dipping, triple dipping in your pocket when you do stuff. And then they're talking about, now if, let's, let's say I worked my ass off and I saved money, right? I die. My kid's going to inherit my money. You know who's going to get a cut? After me making the money and them taking their cut. The U.S. of A. The government's going to take a cut out of the money and leave my kids. And these are the kind of policies people want to vote for. Where does your money go? Do you even know where your money goes? That you vote for these high taxes? Do you think that... I don't trust nobody with my money except for myself. Yeah, word. And the government's like, oh, we'll just take your money. We'll invest it in this and that. It's like, well, you're not... Where, where's the money going? If if I filed my taxes and in my IRS forms it said, you know, 4% of your taxes went to this, 5% of your taxes went to this. Do you agree with this? Yes or no? Check, check, check. You know what I'm saying? If I could vote right there on my income tax... What I want my money, like, I don't want no money going to the military. Zip, zero. Get rid of that. Put whatever money would have went to the military, put it to education instead. If we had that option, that would change the United States. Because all these people talking crap that they don't want the, the, the United States government, the military, going to other countries. If you had the opportunity every time you filed your taxes to vote on that, the government would send so much less money to the military and it'll increase money to wherever you ask. And most people are going to say education. So people talking crap about, oh, basketball players and football players make more money than teachers. That would be, This would be a perfect opportunity to pay them more. So you're not increasing your taxes at all by doing this. All you're doing is saying, L- lower the percentage over here and higher the percentage over here and I pay the same amount. You know? Again, these are things that... People, they don't want to take it into their own hands. What they want to do is they want to let a government official tell them what to do. If you vote for me, I'll do this. No. How about I vote for you and you give me power to do stuff? That's what I want. I don't want to vote for you so you can do stuff. I want to vote for you so you can give me the power so I can do stuff. Look, this just happened a, a day ago. A rise in violence against women prompts Puerto Rican government to declare a state of emergency. What is, it? What is happening? Why women? Are they spreading COVID again? Are Responding these women to spreading the right, COVID? Also, there was a there was a woman that that was uh, she was murdered, bro. Um, re- in response to a rise in murders and assaults against women, Puerto Rican governor has declared a state of emergency for gender violence in the U.S. territory, drawing attention to what he describes as. The consequences of systemic machismoism, I read that a, a little extra, uh, inequity, discrimination, lack of education, lack of guidance, and above all, lack of action. Gender violence is a social evil based on ignorance and attitudes that cannot have space or tolerance in, the, in Puerto Rico that we aspire to. Governor Pedro something said in a news release, it is my duty and my commitment as governor to establish a stop to gender violence. And for these purposes, I have declared the state of emergency. What do they mean by gender violence? Like are people just randomly punching women in the street? Or is it like this people beating their wives at an alarming rate? More than (laughs) one in four women in the Caribbean and Latin America experience uh, in intimate partner violence in their lifetimes, according to a recent study by the Organization for Economic Cooperative and Development report, um, the Miami Herald, a watchdog group, the Observatory for Gender Equality, counted 60, f- I can't even pronounce that word, um, 
Femicides in Puerto Rico last year. Yeah. Women dying. Women getting killed, yeah. Women getting killed. Damn, bro. Uh, last year, a 62 put, a 62% increase from the previous year. It's, I think this might, when, when he says machismoism, is this idea that the male species is superior to the woman. Yeah. You know, and if and if um, a woman cheats, then she, then she, she needs to get punished. She needs to. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what they're saying. Yo, you just make it so colorful. Yeah. Um, but you understand what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's it's sad that that's a thing there. Yeah. I mean, like you said, like I think that's a correct uh, assessment. It's be lack of education. People don't know no better. They only know what their parents did. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's all, that's all we know. You know, but it used to happen a lot out here. Yeah, it right? still happens out here. Yeah, but I don't. F- I feel like it's like not as much. Not in our circles. It still happens out here, though. It definitely no. Yeah. By f- by all means, I mean, t- bro, it happens. But I feel like when I when I think back, I'm like the nineties, the eight. You know, oh god, yeah. You see that right there? Oh snap! They're trying to get your money. Um, I feel like um, wow, I feel like it's gotten. Better, it's still there. It still exists. It's still a thing, obviously. Yeah. But I feel like in Puerto Rico, I mean, the numbers are there. Sixty a sixty-two percent increase from the prior year. That's insane. Yeah, but it says a femicide. Was that like that's a very like? Is it just women getting murdered because femicide? Let's look at the word. What if femicide? No, but I, I know what it means. I'm just saying. What does what do they count? It's almost like saying so many people died of Corona. But they didn't really die of corona. They died because they had hepatitis B and corona. They got hit by a truck and corona. So it's not that the corona killed them. It's that they had a, other issues, but they also had corona. So my thing is that, do they do they saying 62% of women died? 62% of women got murdered, right? How many of those murders were actually boyfriends killing their girlfriends? Sunday's emergency declaration seeks to... Elevate and focus the government's response. It follows the high profile death of Angie Naomi Gonzalez, a nurse and mother of three from Barlinguetas, whose partner of 16 years, Roberto Rodriguez, allegedly admitted to her murder. Wow. According to police. So put him in jail. Throw the, throw the freaking uh, book at him. That'll teach people. What the hell does that have to do with white supremacy? What do you mean? What 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 are those? That's that's from the one of the riots. This picture? Yeah. Is it, what's the title of? There's a title above it. Keep reading. What is the? What is that? Why is that picture there? I don't know. Uh, what is that? Read that. Read that right under it. Yeah. Bro, that is so far away. See if I, I can get it. Yeah. A September 2020 protest led by the activist group Feminist Collective demanded a response to the gender based assaults and murders and disappearances. They're using tiki torches. That's in Puerto Rico. That's crazy. That's a, that, that was a big uh, visual for the white supremacist like, march or whatever they called it, whatever the march they called it. Where the white people were marching with the the tiki torches or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> That's sad. Pues, ¿qué se va a hacer? That's sad. That's sad because... It's lack of education. It's, like I said, it's people that just don't understand. Yeah. It, it, it. I mean, I don't see a resolution either. I yeah. see Puerto Rico, like you, I see Puerto Rico becoming a state and just dwindle from there. It's just going to become a state. It's going to be a background sound. Because if you really think about what Puerto Rico can bring to the table for the U.S., what is there? Welfare, nothing. I'm telling you, it's, it's, we're gonna. It's gonna be a backwater state. It's gonna be like, like the, why is New York on the map? Why is New York very popular? Because we have money here. You know what I'm saying? We got the we got tourism attraction. We got the financial district. We got, you know what I'm saying? Why is California on the map? Why is Texas on the map? Why are these big states on the map? Florida. Pennsylvania, which is not even a, not even a freaking massive state, Pennsylvania is on the map. When do we hear about West Virginia? We only hear about West Virginia 
when it's time for elections or something or something bad happens. Puerto Rico is going to be like that. Nobody's going to think about Puerto Rico. Look how it is now. If, if, forget about being a state. Puerto Rico is a United States territory. It's a commonwealth. Why isn't America helping Puerto Rico right now? Right? America is supposed to look out for Puerto Rico. Why aren't they doing it right now? This is no investment. Why don't that, that exactly? Why don't they? What makes people think that if we become a state, it'll all change? Nothing's gonna change, yo. Nothing's gonna change. <laughs> You're gonna get taxed more. You know what I'm saying? That's what's gonna happen. I wonder if we could. I wonder if there's a way to, like, petition a bill. We've been talking about this. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if there's a way of petitioning a bill of what the governor. Or what the Puerto Ricans should do. I mean, it's it's it sounds simple, right? We we say it like it's one, two, three. It's not going to be easy. No, going independent is not going to be easy, and especially when you don't have educated people that can't figure out that they shouldn't be killing women. Mm. Well, look, they have they had a group in, a, in New York City called the Young Lords. Well, years ago, they were fighting for the Puerto Ricans in the community in New York City, in Spanish Harlem, right? They expanded. They were doing the thing. Everybody hears about the Black Panthers. The Black Panther Party fed the fed the homeless. They cleaned the streets. Young Lords did the same exact thing for Spanish Harlem. Okay. They decided we need to go to the motherland and help out Puerto Rico. You know what happened? Nothing. They got dissolved into nothing. They didn't get the respect from the Puerto Ricans because they were from New York. You know what I'm saying? They're not from. They weren't born in Puerto Rico, so you're not Puerto Rican. You know what I'm saying, right? We we hear that all the time. We're not we're not Puerto we're New Yorkans. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how they look at us. I go to Puerto Rico. They're like, oh, you have such a cute accent. Because when I speak Spanish, I speak Spanish differently than them. You know what I'm saying? I have an accent to them. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, you sound like a, a New Yorkan. What we, was that noise? That was my. Uh, that's your phone. No, I don't even know my phone's actually. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> that's the, I was like that. That that's that. That was outside. Like, that's not an Android phone sound. I mean, uh, so iPhone. iPhone sound, no. That's an Android sound, right? It's probably the guy sneaking in your backyard. Oh, well, thank God that you're here to protect me, Noel. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, 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 it's it's almost like it's pointless with Puerto Rico. It's almost like just make it a state, let everything it, go to it's, crap. It's, it's out of our hands. I mean, you, the only thing we can do is voice our opinions. Nobody's going to hear us. Nobody's going to listen to us. Nobody hears the cries. People died trying to make Puerto Rico independent. People tried killing governors of the United States of America to try to make Puerto Rico independent. You know what I'm saying? What we're doing right now is nothing compared to the extremism that went in the past. Nothing changed. Is Everything's getting pushed further and further to one side. And because, of, especially nowadays with the propaganda going on in this country, there's no turning back. We're all going to be pushed to one side of the aisle. And it's only going to be what they want, and they're going to be the ultimate gods. And it's it's sad, and I, but I'm telling you, Puerto Rico is not going to be nothing but a welfare state. I wish that I we would have somebody here that, you know, an opinion of someone who, who's for statehood, just to hear why. What, well, give me something that would be. They're going to tell you Puerto Rico's in debt, and America can help them with the debt. That's what they're going to say. Now my thing is like, okay, sh we have cities in new in America. That went into debt that America is not helping. Detroit? Flint, Michigan. Oh. Flint, Michigan doesn't even have a police force, if I remember correctly. Flint, Michigan was with the hurricane, right? Or they're the ones with the with the pipes, the messed up pipes, the water pipes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. They're going to help Puerto Rico. They don't even help their own states. What was the other state? Katrina. Katrina. That was, remember, George Bush doesn't like black people. Remember that? You remember that? You got to show. George Bush doesn't care about black people. See, so you Puerto Rico's like help us, America. If we become a state. They're gonna. It's like we're gonna walk through the gates of heaven. Like no, America doesn't even take care of their own things. I know you could go to certain cities and it looks like it was a war, like a war happened, and you're just looking at. Remember when we it was Detroit, right? That we drove down to. Yes, you remember that. Yes, bro. Every, and we're from New York. Yeah, I know. We're from New York, and we're like from like the nineties. We yeah. grew up with graffiti <laughs> was everywhere, bro. And when we went there, this thing and I were like. Oh, we got to get out of here. Yeah. Yo, it's crazy because, like, it'll be a full block of buildings, but only two of them have people that live in it. The, all the other buildings are just boarded up. 
Just you, nobody lives there. One of the things that they started doing, it was a commercial that I saw. Um, one of the things that they started doing, uh, I don't know who exactly it was. Sorry. They started bringing lights back. Because remember, it was also dark. It wasn't like lights and stuff. <laughs> Yo, it was it was insane. It was, it was like, like we're going to get raped. Three, bro. <laughs> Um, they started bringing light to the community, lights at night, so people were, you know, I mean, who's going to be around a city where at 6 o'clock, you know when the light, you know, when it gets uh, daylight savings, when it's yeah, it's dark at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? Who wants to live in a city where it's, you can't, you need a flashlight just to walk around oh, the street? No. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's going to be in that. No one's going to put themselves in that environment. Every single house was boarded up for blocks. Yeah. And, and, and to think that, yeah, that's one of our own states. That you could Puerto buy real estate out there for mad cheap, though. Obviously, there's aren't there's Nobody no electricity. Be, yeah. You're living in the darkness. So your argument, your your statement of you know if 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 they treated their one of, and it, Detroit was one of the first thirteen colonies, right? Everything on this side of the thing, well, the first, yeah, the I, first. I don't, Chicago so was it? No, I don't think Chicago. Oh, Illinois. I don't know. Look up the thirteen colonies. <sighs> it's in it's in uh, Chicago's in Illinois. I don't think it is. Uh, what were the 13 colonies? Let's see. I don't think. Uh, oh. One moment. Hey. All that. All that. Oh, she, that's, she probably heard me asking the question. All of them, bro. What do you mean, all of them? Like, what the? F- what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of them? Just look up a list, bro. I know, right? Hold on. I got to go back. Yeah. This thing is destroying murder. This thing is look at the look at, at the ads at right there, right there. The thirteenth list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. I wish they would just give me a list. I wish too, right there. You can just read them off the map. Let's see. Oh, right there. That's not it. That list right there with the Delaware, map. Maryland. No, it's not definitely not. I don't know. It's all the way to the left. Where is Detroit? It's by the Great Lakes, up that way. Detroit? Yeah. <clears throat> what? Detroit is up that way, towards the towards Canada, to the left. Just go to Google Maps. I want to. Right there. Fuaga, there. Zoom out. See the Great Lakes right there, towards Canada? Bang. Oh my gosh, bro. Oof, way off. The Way Mike, off. I think Mike lives around there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it definitely wasn't. Definitely wasn't. Look at Virginia. Virginia. What's, what's, is there West Virginia there? No. No, not yet. Virginia. North Carolina. South Georgia. M- Maryland. Delaware. Pennsylvania. New York. Connecticut. Wow. Rhode and They, they want to make Hampshire. Washington, D.C. a state. Washington was D.C. was set apart so it could be independent from the states, from the United States, to be its own entity. That's why it's called the District of Columbia. Separate from the United States, from the from the states, the actual states. I think Washington, D.C. is actually federal property. But it. it, Top officials in Puerto Rico say they believe they can make progress towards statehood after vo- voters <coughs> on the island approved a statehood referendum and now that Democrats control Congress and the White House. In interviews, the governor, Pedro, I can't pronounce his name, and resident commissioner, Jennifer Gonzalez Colon, said they believe that they can build bipartisan support for statehood measures in the White House this year. Though both acknowledge the uphill fight such a bill would face at the Senate, there's no way the Senate's gonna go for it. Check. I think the Senate is de- is Democrat now. The Senate is Democrat. I thought Look it was. It up. Let's see. Look State. it up. Senator Robert Blake. Um, Senator, what? What am I asking? Senator, uh, party. Senator, but Senate party affiliation. I don't know. I don't know how you look that up. What it says? 
party leader. Usually it's like an infograph that shows you like by color. Really? Yeah. You gotta look at images though. Let's you do usually something quick like that. Picture book. Oh my gosh. Oh, but you put leaders. It's only gonna show you the leaders. Oh right? Jesus Christ. A pendejo. Just a bunch of old people. Right there, bong. See that? You can see Ooh, it, ooh is Republican. that is that is that recent though? Oof. I know when the hell I don't know. Here we go. Twenty twenty right there. What? I got that Republicans. Oof. By two. Barely. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oof. There's I, no way they're gonna go for it. I don't like when one party has all three branches. Or all three uh how the two houses in the Oh gosh. And the executive branch because then they have they do whatever the hell they want. I like opposition. I don't care who the opposition comes from as long as there's one. Somebody has to stop them. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, you guys are wilding. Or, you know what? What you guys are saying is all right. We'll let it go. Because then in that case, if the opposite team says you guys are all right, let's go, then I know it's a good thing. Yeah. You know? But if the opposite team's like, yo, y'all wilding, it's like, all right, now we need to talk about this. You know what I'm saying? Apparently, what's going to happen now with the... Uh, this is what I saw. I only read the... Wow. The 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 question of, of status has been a fulcrum of Puerto Rican politics since 1950 but a 2016 supreme court decision effect effectively rendering the notion of commonwealth status mott added new urgency to excuse me the b debate uh again i i don't hear i don't hear any good positive argument of puerto rico becoming a state yeah not for puerto ricans and guess what not for the united states either yeah, United you know, States doesn't get it. That's what I'm saying. Like, but mind you, the Democrats, all they want, they're very. So this is what you notice about. You're gonna look at the whole. Thing. Look at the last four years of Trump. Think about think about the the, the years before that. For the, some of you guys, I remember that with Obama, and now look forward to Biden. You're gonna see Democrats do things to get votes. Republicans do things to to uh, to help the people that they have, whoever those people are. They want to help them. Democrats, they want to help. They do want to help. Don't get me wrong. They want to help. But they mostly do things because they want votes. They want to stay in power. They want to keep more power. How can we get more power? How can we get the votes? What, does it take me bringing Jay-Z and Beyonce on stage to get votes? Because I'll do that. I got hot sauce in my bag. I'll say whatever it takes to get the votes. You know what I'm saying? When if you listen to, let's say, somebody like Donald Trump, he don't care how you feel. He don't care if you, you, know, if you vote for him. I'm going to do this for my people. If you want this too, come join the game. You know what I'm saying? And that's the difference I see. Democrats are very big on show. You got to join the party. If you don't join the party, you're a, you're a bigoted homophobe. You're this, you're that, and the third. Republicans are like, I don't care what you believe in. Unless you, if you believe in these values and you're willing, if you vote for me, I'll pass those values, then come on board. And I don't care what you, that's why when people, like when Donald Trump, when the first run for president, they're like, the guy from the KKK or something like that, he's, he said he's going to vote for you. What do you say? He's like, I don't care what you're going to say. Because it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. If I'm running for president and somebody says, I'm going to vote for him, I'm like, good, vote for me. I don't care. I don't care who votes for me. How about that? I just want to I, I want to win so that I can do, make these changes. So when people are like, oh, you know, white supremacists vote for you, what are you going to say? It's like, if it was me, I'd be like, um, welcome, you know, you know, welcome to vote. Vote for whoever you want. I don't care who you vote for. How about that? Okay. I, I think that's madness when people say that. Or you're going to leave out one section of the population because they don't think like you? You know what I'm saying? And then you're saying that you're going to be the president of the entire country. I'm the president of every single person here except for these guys. I don't want them. I don't want them. You know what I'm saying? Now, I could understand if they're not Americans. that You could be like, I don't want them because you're not their president, right? Yeah. You're the president of the United States. <laughs> so if, if they're not Americans, like if British people came here, you'd be like, I don't care what you think or whatever because you're not part of my country. You're welcome to stay here as long as you want. Spend the money, buy money, whatever. But you're not American, so you can, you know, your opinion doesn't really count. I, I just think it's madness the way people think about things. Like automatic, if you if you have a red R next to your name, you're a bad guy. But if you have a blue D, you're the good guy. That doesn't make no sense to me because there's bad guys on both sides. There's good guys on both sides. So I was. This was a question that popped up in our conversation just now. I was wondering since affiliation, what. 
the history of governors. The Whig Party, all right? That's the party we got to bring back. The Whigs. The Whigs? Oh, you don't know. <laughs> what are you looking up? I'm looking up the president. I'm thinking about the presidents. Yeah, I'm back in Puerto Rico. So oh. I'm looking here at the governors since Luis Munoz Martin. Um, all the way till now, what their party affiliation has been. Mm -hmm. The first dude was independent. Um, and then you have, I'm going to just count the reds, the Republicans, because the rest are going to be blue. One, two, three, four. Four. Out of how many? Out of 14. <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Oh, wait, not even. Hold on. Look at the year. What does it say? August 9, 2018 for the lady. Okay, now what does that say on the bottom? The one after all that. That right there. What does that say? Why is it, why is her separate? I think it's... I don't know. That's a good question. After the resignation of this guy, she came back in. Oh. So she had it. So it's not four. It's three. She came back. It's three. Out of 14. Out of 14. No, she didn't come back. She's there. No, 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 no. It is 14. It is 14. They're just mentioning here because she's the first person who I stepped into, um, stepped into um, because of her resignation. No, no. That's what I'm saying. It's not four Republicans out of 14. It's three Republicans out of 14. It's three. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, the total is 14, like it says, obviously. So it's interesting, right? So already uh, we've looked at it here. We've seen, we've seen what we're talking about right now. The cities that are run by Democrats for a long time are always bad. Think bad things always happen to the community. Puerto Rico's poor, they're welfare state. Chicago, horrible. Grand violence, poor, welfare state. New York City, going bankrupt very soon because of the, the Democratic... Uh, yeah, look, it breaks it down. Hold on, hold on. It breaks it down right here. The Democratic Party, there was 10 of them. The Republic Party, there was only three and one independent. Yeah. So, New York City, what's another one? Uh... California is walling right now. California is walling right now. Things are going hard. People are leaving California in droves. People don't want to be in California anymore because the the I don't know why. I, I honestly I don't know why. And I really need to talk to the Democrat to, to hear their logic behind this. Why is it that people that are Democrats think it's okay to suspend rights? for things right so like a republican will be very you gotta really be some extremeness for a republican to be like all right we gotta suspend the rights for this person okay it has to be super extreme like what what do you mean by uh, suspending people's rights give me an example of what 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 rights are being all right i'll give you an example there's a school shooting we need to take away their guns well, the Republicans is like, we don't got to take away the guns. We need to find out why the guy shot. It's a specific guy. You know what I'm saying? He could be crazy or whatever. So, you know, he could be a terrorist. We need to find out reasons. We can't just say take away everybody's gun because there's one guy did something. Because why? Because guns are a Second Amendment right. We can't just take them away. Um, freedom of speech. Democrats are very big on shut them down, deplatform them, take away their ability to talk, Right? First, they said, take them off of Twitter, whoever they, this guy is, this this uh, this uh, this imaginary person we're talking about that you don't like the way he's what he says. Take them off Twitter. Twitter's like, fine, we'll take them off Twitter because everybody, the Democrats are all for it. All the liberals are for it. Republicans are like, you don't want to talk. If they don't allow you there, why don't you join our platform? You can talk over here all you want. We don't care. You're an American. Freedom of speech. As long as you don't do nothing illegal, you're good to go. And then what happens? Republicans are like, wait, they got their own platform? Take away their platform. What is the name of the platform? Parlor. Parlor. Take off Parlor. And it's like you're you're literally cutting cutting things off. Why is it okay? If a Republican, you know, said if a Democrat says something about a Republican, they'll talk a lot of crap. Don't get me wrong. But they'll never be like, we're gonna take away his rights. And I think if another if a Republican senator, governor, whatever say we gotta take away their rights, other people would step in hopefully and be like no you can't do that that's you can't that's unconstitutional you can't do that don't even think about going there because that's a slippery slope and you're going to start doing that it's going to start a whole process of stuff that we don't want to deal with 
You know what I'm saying? Once you do, once you take away one person's rights, it gives you the ability to be like, well, then if we could take away his rights, why can't we take away that guy and that guy and that guy? It becomes a slippery slope, you know? And you're seeing that now. Apparently, Tulsi Gabbard, you can look it up. Tulsi Gabbard's trying to tell everybody right now that um, the Democrats are going to start a mass surveillance on people that call themselves Republicans online. You don't know how to spell Tulsi. Hell no. T U L I. U L I. Oh, just had it. You just had it. Tulsi Gabbard. What, what did you do? keep going? Just look it up in the news. It should be one of the top stories. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard doubles down slam. Blah, blah, blah. Nope. Tulsi Gabbard against the danger of democratic terrorism. There you go. That might be it. Laws. Uh. The domestic of new domestic terrorism laws. Oh, that's right, because they wanted to pass a law. The Democrats wanted to pass laws about the people that that uh, attack the Capitol. They wanted to pass specific laws for them, but they write it in a very sneaky way so it can apply to any, almost anybody. And they did that with the Patriot Act. Remember, they did that with the Patriot Act. They're watching all your emails, and you think it's secret, but if the government wants it, they're gonna get it. Well, before it was impossible. Before they couldn't get your information, they literally needed to get a court order. Now they don't gotta get any of that. They could just get it. What? To get the private information? Yep. They could just ask the company. Excuse me, can you give me the information? Now, if the company says no. Like Apple did? Yeah, basically like Apple did. Now, if the company says no, we're not going to give it to you, then then they're going to have to go through the court process, blah, blah, blah. But they could get it, but they have to go through the channels. Yeah, they got to go through the channels. And those channels are really, they're there to protect we, us, yeah, the, funny, the yeah. people. Yeah. So it's like for them to then now get away with it is like, where, oh, man, it's almost like, uh, it's almost like shh. so like pointing the finger and calling out the things that are obviously wrong from you know I've been doing that lady I'll take snapshots of, of, of things that Biden and his administration are doing and I'll send it to you know my family and friends yeah. and you could hear a pin drop yeah I, I got things that I, I've been reading that I actually wanted to talk to today but I'm gonna wait for somebody with a different opinion to come on because yeah, there's things that happen that literally, if it was the other way around, people would they would be up, they'd be all over the news. See, but I I feel like if we did get somebody who's um on the on the left, um, the left, right? Yeah, I think that um, again, I I you would you would I, I don't see I don't see anyone really holding up an argument. Yeah, it's more like we won. That's all that matters. Yeah. See, my thing too is that I I find this when I ever talk to somebody that's on the right, I find myself agreeing with them a lot more. Like we're able to have like a conversation. Like oh, you know, and for some reason, if they disagree with me, once we have a conversation, we kind of either oh I see your point, or maybe I'll I'll change my oh I see your point, or we both agree. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna agree on this. You know what I'm saying? But if I ever argue or have a conversation with somebody from the other side, they immediately go to racism. And it's like annoying. <sighs> it, it is. It immediately goes to racism. It's like, oh, you know, because, you know, systematic racism over the thousand years, you know, for the you know, past 400 years, you know, black people. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, bro, like what we're talking about today right now. What's up? You know what I'm saying? You can't go to school? Who told you not to go to school? Your dad? You know, say who told you that? What was your dad? There are literally dad? grants made for us. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, take it. Like, if you really they, want to take it. They, to say that it, there, you know, the government is racist. Uh, it, it's just insane because there are literally programs. There's, 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 there's scholarships for people who are left, left-handed. There's scholarship for people for all, uh, all types of races that they could get, you know, federal funding for. But again, it's it's more like we've become so blue and so red. That's all that matters, the color. Yeah. Hey, you know what's crazy? I drove, we, we started the podcast looking up the guy's name. What was it? Luis Munoz? Mart. Mart, Mart, Martin? Martin? Whatever his name is. I drove down that avenue, the street that's named after him. I drove up Martin Luther King Boulevard, 125th. I drove up uh, Malcolm X uh, you know, Boulevard. Boulevard. I drove on Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard today. I drove... All over a Black Lives Matter mural, all of these areas I drove today, avoiding drug addicts, avoiding needles on the floor. 
You know what I'm saying? Avoiding that stuff. And every time I saw something, I would just be like, you gotta like go call somebody to come get it or whatever, because I'm not touching that crap. But all that. And then I go and I drive over here. Drive over here. This is not the best neighborhood over here. You know, say where I live at. It's not the best neighborhood in Staten Island, but it's not the worst. It's not as bad as that. And this area, the people actually care. They sweep the front of the building. They take care of the area. Like, it's crazy. Like, sometimes I'll, I'll come out in the morning and I'll see people sweeping the freaking sidewalk. Because, you know, over here, the trucks don't clean. The broom trucks don't sweep the floor. The broom. <laughs> he works for sanitation. He yeah. doesn't know what it's called. Alternate side. No, I know, but I'm, uh, I don't know if people know what the thing is called. The broom trucks, they they sweep the streets. You know, yeah. they don't do that over here. No, but f- over here it's clean. In in Harlem, where I work at, they clean the same street every single day, five days a week. They sweep that street, and five days a week is covered in garbage. The, again, the the immediate response is that's because we were treated wrong. We're not, you know, we were, we're 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 not looked at. The government's racist, you know. Yeah, so then I'm going to say the government's racist, so you're going to tell your kid to throw garbage in the street? Because the government's racist? Doesn't I make mean, no sense, right? I don't care what race I am. I'm not going to tell my kids to throw garbage in the street, especially if this is your neighborhood. Yeah. You know what It doesn't make any sense that you're going to dirty your own neighborhood for what? That's like burning down. That That's why when the, when the riots were taking place in New York, remember, with the George Floyd stuff? I was laughing that they were annihilating downtown Manhattan. I was like, that's how you do it. Not one business in Harlem, I think, got destroyed. Not one. They went downtown and they took that stuff because that makes more sense. Yeah, right? Like, we got to go back here. Why would we destroy? Yeah, some- why would we destroy our own neighborhood? The same principle applies to what you're saying about cleaning up after yourself exactly, or not yeah. littering where you don't shit where you eat. Basically, yeah. Right? There you go. That's the phrase right there. And if you keep, listen, and uh, there's a, a very um, controversial uh, policy. That took place, I think it was in the 90s, called uh, Broken Windows Policy. Okay, um, This is when Giuliano was mayor, and I think Raymond Kelly was uh, the, the police commissioner. The idea is this, okay, and we know this to be true because every individual that's listened to this, think about this for a second. If you walk by a garbage can in the street, and it's overflowing with trash, just piled and fell all over the floor on the floor. It's all messed up, right? And you walk past it, and you take a, a gum wrapper, and you throw it at the garbage can, and it hits the garbage can, and it falls on the floor right next to it. But there's mad garbage. Are you going to move the garbage out the way to pick up your gum wrapper and put it on top of the garbage can? <laughs> yes. You know what I'm saying? That's not mine. I, this is mine. Most people don't care. They're like, oh, it's mad garbage anyway. Just keep it moving, right? But now if the floor is spotless, okay, let's say you walked into a hotel. That's nice. Are you going to take the gum wrapper and just throw it on the floor? No, because the, the whole area is clean. You don't want to be standing out. You're going to be like, oh, I, gotta, I can't throw my stuff on the floor. But in the street, it's easier. In the street, I throw my cigarette on the floor. I throw my gum on the floor. No problem. But I'm not going to do that at a nice hotel because it's clean. That's the mentality that everybody has. Okay? Broken window policies is basically using that own mentality against people. If you're going to go by a neighborhood and it's a crappy neighborhood with broken windows and messed up burnt down cars, blah, 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 you're not going to really take care of the neighborhood because the whole neighborhood's crappy. But if you make sure that if somebody breaks a window, that that person gets stopped. Excuse me, sir, you can't be breaking the window. We got to stop that. You go to the building. Hey, you got to fix those windows because you're making the neighborhood look bad. And basically you do all that. You keep fixing the neighborhood little by little, little by little. And then it changes the mentality of the people that live there. Like, oh, it's really nice over here. Look at, an example would be uh, Park Slope in Brooklyn. Park Slope in Brooklyn was really ghetto, really dirty, really bad. Now, it's very clean. Now, it's one of the best neighborhoods in New York City, I think. I think it's the most expensive neighborhood in New York City, if I remember correctly, outside of Manhattan. Right? Yeah. It was listed as one of the top neighborhoods in, in by some magazines. Yeah. And this was a few years back, so I don't know if that has changed. But mind um, you, this is from a neighborhood... That was the ghetto. If you talk to people that grew up in their neighborhood, they'll tell you straight up, you're not allowed to walk on 7th Avenue because it's bad. Drugs, guns, gangs, you are not going to. Now, 
Seventh Avenue, got the hospital, got all these nice little restaurants. It's beautiful out there. You want freaking frozen yo froyo? You want a froyo? You got to go to Seventh Avenue. They got the best froyo. You know what I'm saying? Like it's changed completely. They had their own little Halloween thing parade. They had the, their yeah. own little uh, gay pride. That's they right. Have ton- you, they have the the fair that been around. It's funny because on Halloween, sometimes I'll go to that neighborhood with my kids because they got the good candy. They got the bars. They sent the whole bar, the big bar. So the idea is that the neighborhoods are clean. So we're gonna take care of our neighbor because it's clean. You know what I'm saying? We don't want our neighbor getting look how nice it is now. Why would we mess it up? Now, the controversy is this. The 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 police that enforced it, mind you, they did a huge hiring of police down during that time too. Um the police would arrest anybody for any little crime because they want to get all the criminals off the street. They look for any reason. To lock off somebody that lock up somebody that committed a crime, where the guns at, right? I don't know how many people here grew up in, in New York City in the freaking nineties, two thousands. As soon as you get stopped by the police, where the guns at? Where the drugs at? That's the first thing they ask you. Where the guns at? Where the drugs at? One time I got arrested because I was hanging on the park. I was not drinking. We did smoke. I was not drinking. We were sitting at a bench. There were empty beer bottles under the bench that we were sitting at. It had nothing to do with us. Cops locked us up because we had open containers of alcohol. Oof. We were not drinking. They let me out within like five or six hours. They put me in a cell, questioned me where the drugs at, where the guns at. I don't know where any of that crap was at anyway. So I was like, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Those beers weren't mine. That's all I know. Boom. All right, no problem. After like five or six hours, they just let us go. Peace. Good luck. So interesting. So I was thinking about the the when you mentioned the uh, when I had mentioned the fair, the fair started according to this from 27, 17 years in a row, and this article was in twenty eighteen. So we're talking about two thousand and one. Yeah. That means that all of nineties there was no fair, and there was a reason for that. That's like around the time that we worked at Bessel, right? Yeah. yeah. That's when the neighbors really started turning over. Yeah. I um. And so there was no community fair. And after that, after they started cleaning up, really what happened in Park Slope was, you know, the the trans the transformation was unique. But nonetheless, you feel the vibe of oh, this is a clean. You you feel the vibe of this is a clean. Like when when you you went and traveled and you stood at a hotel in another state, you know, and you saw how clean the the hotel was, you were like, whoa, everybody, you know, keep yeah, it, uh, don't touch that, don't touch that, don't touch that. <laughs> You know what I mean? And that came from what kind of mentality is that, right? You know what I mean? That comes from a mentality of living in the hood. Yeah. You know what I mean? But even we could recognize uneducated, like, oh, this is a nice place. Don't ruin it because they're going to they're call, call us out. Like, you know, we don't want to. St- we already stand out. Yeah. We Look at us. They know we're not from here. We know we don't belong here. Let's not do anything else to draw more attention. But when you go back home, what do you do? Eh, it's the same old thing. Now, now there's a thing, too. There's another little tidbit. A lot of people complain about gentrification. I get it. It's horrible. Horrible for the people that can't afford it. Okay? Oof. If you're on welfare, you ever heard of the term called beggars can't be choosers? If you're on welfare and you're on Section 8, you got to get what they give you. You know what I'm saying? You're not getting it on your own, so you can't really cry about it when they kick you out. It's not yours. They're giving it to you. You're not supposed to be on Section 8 welfare for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? That's to help you through a rough patch in life. Okay? And I get it. People are sick. People can't do this. People can't do that. But if that's the case, there's no reason for your grandmother to raise you in a Section 8 apartment. And when she passes away, God forbid, she's going to leave it to you. And she's going to make sure your name is on the lease so that when she dies, you can have it. Why do you want it? (laughs) You want to live in the projects forever? Why don't you move out? Or why don't you, if you're going to live in the projects and pay $200 rent, why don't you save your money, get with your people, and buy something? Buy a condo, buy a building, buy a two-family house, a three-family house. You can you go buy a four-family house and only pay resident taxes instead of paying uh, corporate taxes. If you buy a family five-family house, you pay corporate tax, which is a lot more. Buy a four-family house, live in one of them for a year. Once you move out, you can rent out the fourth one. You can make a lot of money. This is the idea of, of, of helping. This is what the chinitos do. This is what the judios do. You know what I'm saying? They get together, they put their, they pull their money in, we're going to buy this, we're going to make money off this. Um, I give big shout out, big props to um, some Puerto Ricans out there, some Puerto Ricans that I know, some brothers that are doing that. They bought property upstate, 
together. They pull their money in. Now they fix it. They're renting it out and they're making money and then they're doing it again. And then they're going to do it again and they're not going to stop. And they're going to do it until they have a lot of property making a lot of money. But it takes people to freaking do it. You're not going to do it if you don't have a good job. And if you don't go to school and you don't educate your kids, you're not going to do it. Now, for some of us, it's too late. It's too oh, late. For, it's too late for me. Done. Only thing I can do is pick up garbage right now. It's too late for me. What I can do, tell my kids, get it together, make a plan right now. You're not going to be freaking Elon Musk, but you're also not going to freaking work in uh, the supermarket. You know what I'm saying? I can help you start off with some information that I didn't know. Now, you ever talk to somebody and be like, imagine if you could be a kid again? But also imagine if you had the the knowledge you have now and then go back in time as a kid. What would you do different, right? You'd be like, I know so much better now. I'll change so much what I did. Well, you can do that with your kids. Your kids are back in time. You can give them the information that you have and be like, look, all you got to do is make a little baby plan to do one thing and that'll launch you forward. But isn't isn't that what our parents told us, warned us about? No, my, well, not my parents. My parents didn't tell me anything. My parents didn't tell me nothing. I didn't, my 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 the, my grandmother raised me. She didn't even know how to read English. She's gonna help me with homework. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? I would lie to her when the teacher told me something to tell my a letter call. I would just lie to her. It was so easy. She didn't know what the hell the teacher was saying. She said, "Oh, okay, that mean." <laughs> like, well, please, well, I just lied to her. No problem, because I'm a stupid kid. That's what kids do. They don't want to get in trouble. They're scared. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I would think in my head of getting away with murder, but really what I was doing was cutting down my future, <laughs> ruining my future. That's what I was doing, but we but have. It's getting it's getting better, no? Wouldn't you say? Like, think about all the people, all the Spanish and all the minority people that you know that are raising kids now. I'm talking about kids, you know. So from the age of birth to 18 years old, right? So that includes me. That includes the list goes on. You yeah. you're already imagining all the people you know. Aren't they doing exactly what you're suggesting in for the our, most in part? our circles? In our circles, yeah, I, because we we've involved our revolved ourselves with like minded individuals exactly, that yeah. are trying to get it exactly. So then, why is it that the rest of the minorities can't get with that picture, bro? I I've so I in my tighter circle, I like you know I want to put myself in a group of people that we're gonna help each other out, we're gonna look out for each other, whatever we hang out, we do this, that. But then in a wider circle, I have people that are not on that mentality. And sometimes I go to their crib and I'm like, this is not the way you gotta do it. <clears throat> That's not how you raise your kid. That's not my kid. I'm not gonna tell you how to do it. But you yelling at your kid and embarrassing them in front of everybody, that's not the way to go. That's Word. not the way to go. Because they're gonna resent you when they get older. But it's none of my business. But you shouldn't do that. Know that now you shouldn't do that. You should pay attention to your kids. You shouldn't be. Everybody in the house should not be drunk at the same time. When you got <laughs> take turns. When you got two year two year old kids running around at twelve midnight, that's not how you do it. It's interesting because my the, the, I have I have neighbors and they're new, and yo most of the time, the noise that come up is insane. Have you heard anything? No, not yet. It's been quiet, right? Yeah. Where did they put those forty kids? Where's the dog? The dog is not moving. <laughs> oh my god, they got rid of the dog. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on, but yeah, most of that is just, you know, and and it's crazy because um, my landlord was talking about um, some of the, the the difficulties that he's that he faces because he's he applied to a certain program where he gets individuals to come in. They pay a real small fraction. And the state, I think, or the city pays for the rest. You're talking about Section 8? I think so. I'm not 100% sure. Section Don't quote is, me. Section 8 is like that. So, you know, the, and he was telling me how, you know, my realtor is getting me these people. And he was saying, <laughs> bro, he was saying that he has to take them in. And most of them are young kids, young, young, young families. And he has to take them in because then what happens is... <clears throat> The pro I don't know if it's the program or if it's the individuals. Um, lawyers call and say we're gonna sue for discrimination. It's horrible. Money's money. You're just yeah. dis- you're discriminating against them because of uh, of you know their economic their, their age, their, their, their age their, and, and their economic um background. Like yeah. and I'm like, what? So it's like he's forced to 
rent it to them or spend all this money on lawsuits. Yeah. That reminds me of my mother in law. The house next door, they built it brand new, the building. So it was like a two family house, three family house. Brand new. It's beautiful. They made a section eight. It's t- cops go there because people are shooting guns next door. The the front windows all broken. Like somebody broke it with like a hammer or something and they just left it like that. Put a freaking uh they lowered the window, they put a bed sheet, they closed it, and that's it. That's their cortina. And it's like curtain. He, he meant curtain. curtain. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying is this. It was a brand new house and they destroyed it. So you can't be mad at, uh, you know, be, this is the, we were kind of talking about this one episode before where we were talking about like names, the Freakonomics show that was like discriminating against names or whatever. That's one of the things. Whereas people like, I rented to young Puerto Ricans and when I did, they broke my window. The My nice clean, my nice clean building was dirty. They had rats when they wasn't. There was a leak from the ceiling because they wouldn't let the kids play in the bathtub. So I can't trust. Shut up. That's my life right now. I dude. can't trust these Spanish people because they did that. And then I rented out to another Spanish family. They did that. So now I have a mentality of these Spanish people are going to mess up my freaking building and I can't do it anymore. Who am I going to rent it out to? Update upstairs. So they, the guy, the fixer guy came and he sealed the bathroom. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, and he came in. He's like, I'm going to cover up the hole that we made to address the issue because the pipes were, like, they were stuffing the pipes. The pipes broke. They fixed the pipes. But, you know, there was a They were stuffing the pipes? Bro, the kids would stuff in anything that they found. You know the little knobs to the to the faucet? Yeah. It was inside the thing. Like, they took it off. They screwed it off and threw it in there. What the hell? <laughs> Wait, the pipes didn't have the freaking thing to stop things from going in there? So the fixer guy came in and he put the thing, the little stopper, whatever it's called. and um, But the water was still um, pour out because what what the conclusion was, and this is not a theory because he went up there and he actually caught the mom doing it. Where she would leave the kids in there swimming, you know, until they turn like raisins, right? Um, and then they'll take them out. All right, four hours. I don't have to deal with my kids. And the kids would run the water to the point where it's overflowing. They would only get out. And what happens after a while? The water gets cold. Yeah. You ran out of hot water. Yeah. So at least three times a day, we would have no hot water because they would fill up the tub and the kids would be in there. That's so annoying. Because <laughs> it's so annoying. I apologize. Um. The kids would, you know, and, and the water would overflow and gush downstairs. So I actually invited the the, the, the one of the, one of the dads because I think there's like three families living upstairs. Shout out to my neighbors, um, and you know, I was like, "Look, this is what's going on." So he took a video of it. He sent it to his girl. When he did, it got a lot less. It was happening like, but not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pouring and then they sealed it so the guy sealed it and then today he's like listen yesterday rather he was like i'm gonna cover up put the she rock and i'm like you shouldn't have done that shouldn't have done that because it's not gonna solve the problem waters have to go somewhere you know what i'm saying yeah. so now i'm thinking the water's gonna build because they sealed the upstairs bathroom they filled up all the cracks and the holes and so if water goes in there it stays there i'm like no don't no. what gravity wins yeah, yeah. Regardless, gravity <laughs> wins. So now that water is gonna trickle to some other part of my of, the, of my it's apartment. It's gonna start leaking in here. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if it starts damaging my pro- my property, we're gonna have problems. And and you know, I I don't because you know they're young. I was there. I was dumb, ignorant. Yeah. You know what I mean? The 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 guy that came down was like, "Yo, listen, how you know? How's the? Do you do you mind the? How's the music? I know. Do you hear the music? I was like, I feel the music when you play it." I feel it in my chest. That's how loud it is. <laughs> and he's like, yo, my back, my back. I was like, it's not that big of a problem because you guys don't, like, you don't hear the music. They put it on, but, like, at 9 o'clock, they're trying to put those kids to sleep, son. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, uh, that's that's perfect. Uh, the music doesn't bother me. But the idea that, uh, <clears throat> the idea that, you know, um, like I want to be friends with them. I don't want I don't want beef. I don't want any problems or animosity. But Especially I, if you live there. Exactly. Such a pain in the ass. Exactly. And what I was telling him was that, you know, I know you got the phone call from the landlord, from the owner today, at least three times, right? He was like, I, he was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, listen, you know, I've been here for four years. If my dude, the landlord, the owner comes over and sees stuff that I don't report, he's going to come at me. So this isn't a stitch, snitching game. 
This is gonna fall on me if I don't report it. Besides the fact that you're doing mad damage to the foundation of the house. Look at that beam drenched. It was like swollen yeah, yeah. with how much water it absorbed. So I'm like, listen, I don't know. I I I I look at you know minorities and people who are who have a difficult life, and I say to myself, but I know people that came out of that, that literally came out of that and made a name for themselves. That you know what I mean. That my na- the the house next door, they're black. Yo, they, Shorty drives a BMW. She's a nurse. They they put a little pond, a little pond. They're like putting it's stuff so together. I'm like cute. what? And I'm like, why is there such a stark difference? So you think this, they're hiding a drug deal, a drug house? Nah, nah. She got that money. She be putting in those <laughs> hours, son. You know, nurses be working those long hours. You Especially know, because COVID. You, COVID. Especially with COVID. They're throwing money at them. Stay at work. Stay at work. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, but I'm just saying to myself, why is it that she was able to make it out? We live in the same neighborhood. They're, yeah. all, they're being raised in the same neighborhood, but one is and the other isn't. And I think it's the same thing with the freaking the guys beating the girls in Puerto Rico. It's education. It's just, and, and it's not like school education. Is it? Is it street smarts? I don't know what it is. The common sense? You just got to tell people, look. Sense you, isn't always common. You're going to get what you give. You know what I'm saying? If you don't put in no work, you're not going to get nothing out of it. You got to put something in. If you don't work hard for something, you don't expect you, you don't expect to win the lottery if you don't even play it. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, people, they want to win the lottery, but they never want to spend money on the tickets. They never want to put in the work. They never want to think. They never want to. I don't want to. I want to have a BMW, but I don't want to make money to get it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a loan. I'm going to get the bank loan. I can't afford to pay it. They're going to put me in debt. They're going to take away my BMW. And now what I got out of it, <laughs> what I got out of it was debt. Instead of saying, let me put in the work, get a really good job so I can really afford it. But niggas don't want that. How many, you know how many BMWs I see in freaking Harlem in front of the projects? It's like, why are you even here? Why don't you go get a nice house? Yeah, if you got the money... Get the hell out of here. Don't raise your kids in this neighborhood. So they're, they're, they're building a Dollar General or one of the dollar stores. There's like a hundred of them, right? Yeah. They're building one right down the block. They gutted the building. Brand new parking lot. They're putting the little bushes up nice and neat. That's nice. It hasn't even opened graffitied already. Graffitied. Yo, what up, everybody? If you like what you saw, please click on some of the video links on the side and please support our channel by liking, subscribing, and leave a little comment and maybe we'll respond back to you and hopefully you'll be a guest on our next episode.